Hi, and this is a video on the introduction to the elements of music, and today we are looking at timbre. Once I get my video to work, there we go. So firstly, welcome. You'll find out in this little video what are the eight elements of music. I'll give you a brief explanation of each of the eight elements of music, and then we're going to have a look at the um at what is timbre in music, and I'm going to go into a lot of detail. Sit back, um, get comfy. This is going to be a long one, okay, because there's a lot of information to cover in this one. So the eight elements of music are dynamics, form, harmony, melody, rhythm, texture, timbre, and tonality. Each of the elements of music are like an ingredient in a recipe. Just like a recipe needs a little bit of some ingredients and a lot more of others, they all contribute to the overall flavour of the dish. The combination and amount of an ingredient is like the chef adding their personal flair and spice to a dish. So too, a musician and composer uses the elements of music to flavour their musical dish to suit their taste and personal style. So a very brief explanation of what each of these eight elements of music um, mean is, dynamics simply refers to how loud or soft the music is, form is the order and arrangement of the parts of the music, Harmony is the instruments that support the melody with chords. Melody is a series of pitches that makes a tune. Rhythm is how long or short a sound is. Texture is the layers of sound or how sparse or dense the music is. Timbre refers to the unique sound quality of an instrument or sound. And tonality is the overall sound of the music as pleasant or unpleasant. So the elements of music timbre, let's get started. What is timbre in music? Tambourine music refers to the unique sound quality that a voice or instrument creates when making a sound in a piece of music. When you are writing or talking about what is tambourine music, you are discussing the sound quality of the individual instrument or the ensemble as a whole. It is important when describing what is tambourine music to use adjectives to help others know what can be heard in the music. There are countless words that can be used to describe what timbre is in music, and what you hear depends not only on the instruments in the music, but how those instruments are creating or producing a sound in the music. A simple example of what is timbre in music is to think about the guitar. There are several different types of guitars, from the classical nylon string to the steel string acoustic guitar, to the many different electric guitars and then the different effects pedals that can be used. Each of these instruments, although they are all type of guitar, all sound very different to one another. Then, when you add in the different techniques that can be used to create a sound on the guitar, such as picking, sliding or strumming, the types of unique sounds that can be created are only limited by the imagination of the musician. When talking about what is tambourine music, it is important to note that there are other names or terms that can be used to discuss instruments used in a piece of music. One term is performing media. Performing media in music is the collective name given to the instruments used in an ensemble or piece of music. Tone colour and sound sources are other names that can be used interchangeably with performing media and can help you to better understand what is timbre in music. When discussing the timbre of the instruments in an ensemble or piece of music, there are a few things that you need to do. The things to listen for and help you discuss this element of music come under the headings of identify the instruments, classify the instruments, explain the techniques, describe the sound quality, range, roll and register of all the instruments. So if you have a look here, we've, if we start with identify, that's the most important thing you need to do is identify the instruments. Then it is classify, so classify the instruments into categories. Explain means explain the techniques used to produce the sound. Describe is how the, um, describe how the instrument actually sounds. Range is the distance between the lowest and highest note of the melody. Roll is the role of the instrument, the role the instrument performs in the melody. And register is the height of the melody described as low or high. Identify the instruments. When discussing what is timbre in the instruments in a piece of music, the first thing you need to do is listen for all the instruments that are being used. Listen to the music and list all the instruments that you can hear. You might find that between sections of the music, the same instruments are being used, but they might be played using a different technique. All these factors will need to be considered when describing what is timbre in music and how each instrument contributes to the overall ensemble. So let's look at classifying the instruments. To classify an instrument, you can use a couple of different musical instrument classification systems. Most instruments in Western culture fit neatly into the instruments of the orchestra and instrument families. 
but there are many instruments from world cultures and modern music that do not fit this system of instrument classification. For this reason, it is sometimes easier to use the horn bostel sax. I'm going to hopefully that's how I've said that right. Horn bostel sax instrument classification categories. In the orchestra, there are four families of instruments. These instruments these include the string family, brass family, woodwind family, and the percussion family. Each family of instruments has a common element that unites them together. The definitions of what makes each family of the orchestra unique are in the slides on the next few pages. So here we go. So this is a very, very quick rundown of um, the instrument families. So you can he see here the string family are instruments that have strings and are bowed, strummed or picked to make a sound. Brass family are instruments um, originally made of brass and have a cup-shaped mouthpiece. The woodwind family are instruments originally made of wood or have a reed in the mouthpiece. Voices, now these aren't particularly part of the family, so I'll come back to them in a minute. But the percussion family, we've got instruments that are hit, shaken or scraped to make a sound. And then we have voices. So the sound created by the human voice, it can be sung, hummed, screamed or spoken to make a sound. The string family. Instruments with strings, these include musical instruments such as the violin, viola, cello, double bass or string bass, harp, harpsichord, piano and guitar. These instruments are mostly bowed, plucked or strummed to make a sound. In the case of the piano, of course, they are hit to make a sound, so it makes them also a percussion instrument. And if you use that link there or in the description below, you'll see um, Grant from the BBC Orchestra and they um, show you the string family. Brass family. The instruments that belong to this family were all originally made from brass and have a cup-shaped mouthpiece. To make a sound on a member of the brass family, the brass player blows air through a cup-shaped mouthpiece. Instruments that belong to this family include the cornet, bugle, trumpet, trombone, French horn and tuba. And again, you can use that link there or in the description below to have a listen to and look at what the brass family sounds like. Woodwind family. The defining feature of instruments that belong to this family of the orchestra were that they were all originally made of wood or have a reed in the mouthpiece. Like the brass family, these instruments require moving air to make a sound, but the mouthpieces for this family of instruments vary greatly. Instruments that belong to the woodwind family include the piccolo, flute, clarinet, oboe, bassoon, contrabassoon, saxophone and even the recorder. And again you can use that link there to have a look at the woodwind family or in the link in the description below. Percussion family. For an instrument to belong to this family, the sound production method is what unites them. In simple terms, percussion instruments are those that can be hit, shaken or scraped to make a sound. But percussion instruments can be categorised further as either tuned or untuned. The difference between this, these is that a tuned percussion instrument has definite pitch and untuned percussion instruments do not have definite pitch. Tuned percussion instruments include instruments like the xylophone, glockenspiel, marimba, tubular bells, timpani and celeste. Untuned percussion instruments include bass drum, snare drum, cymbals, bongo, gong, triangle, tambour, tambourine, clave, guiro, shakers, woodblock, drum kit, and many, many more. Now, in this little sample that you see here, that link there, you can, oh, that's in the description below, they're really only looking at the um, untuned percussion instruments of the percussion family. In the European musical tra tradition, the only instrument that does not fit ne neatly into these families is the human voice. There are four main classifications of the voice. These include from the highest to the lowest, soprano, alto, tenor and bass. There are two other voice types, mezzo-soprano mezzo -soprano and baritone. The human voice is categorised by the range and register of the notes that it can, pe can perform. But also just take note that a soprano, mezzo-soprano and alto are for female voices and then the ten tenor, baritone and bass are for male voices. Not all instruments that you can hear fit neatly into the instrument families from the orchestra. Eric Moritz von Hornbostel and Kurt Sachs together devised a system to categorise instruments in the early part of the 20th century. These two men wrote about their new instrument classification system in that, I'm not even going to try and say it. This was later translated into English in 1961. This system was based on another one devised by Victor Charles Mahillion. Mahillion divided instruments into four broad categories. These were based on the method of sound production material, so moving air column, strings, membrane and the body of the instrument. Hornbustle and Sachs 
sax, sorry, I should say, based their instrument classification system on the Dewey Decimal classification used in libraries. This musical instrument classification comes under five broader headings, and there are almost 300 subheadings. The five main categories are aerophones, chordophones, idiophones, membranophones, and electric sounds or electrophones. And here you can see um, the Hornbostel sax classification. We have an electrophone, which is an instrument that requires electricity to amplify the sound. Please note, a microphone is not an instrument. It is just a means to ampl amplify the sound. The instrument is the voice. In, it amazes me how many people try and tell me that a microphone is an instrument. No, it's just a device used. An idiophone is instruments that are hit, shaken or scraped to make a sound. A chordophone are instruments that have strings and are bowed, strummed or picked to make a sound. Instruments that require movement of air to make a sound are aerophones and a membranophone is an instrument that has a skin or stretched membrane on it. Aerophones, these instruments require moving air to make a sound. Examples of an aerophone instrument include flute, recorder, clarinet, saxophone, trumpet, trombone, cor anglais, French horn, piccolo, pan flute, harmonica, and the ocarina. Basically, anything that is um, that you need air to make a sound in it is an aerophone. Chordophones. A chordophone is an instrument with strings. There are several ways to make a sound with these instruments from bowing, plucking, and strumming. Chordophones include the guitar, violin, cello, harp, mandolin, banjo, double bass, lute, hurdy-gurdy, dombra, charango, bazooki, and many, many more. Idiophones. An idiophone is an instrument that is hit, shaken, or scraped to make a sound. These instruments include the cymbals, guiro, tambourine, xylophone, glockenspiel, balafon, mabira, or thumb piano, slit drum, rattle, triangle, bell, gamelan, tapping sticks, wood block, maracas, vibraphone, and too many more to list here. Membranophones are in, is, um, a membranophone is an instrument that has a skin or membrane stretched across it. This group of instruments includes most drums such as the snare drum, bass, drum, um, bongo, tambour, djembe, talking drum, dun dun, congas, timpani, bodron, tambla, sorry, tabla, dabuka, coal, and again, many, many more drums from all parts of the globe. Electric sounds or electrophones. Electric sounds or electrophones are instruments that require electricity to make a sound. These include instruments such as the electric guitar, bass guitar, electric piano, organ, synthesizer, theremin, Hammond organ, electric guitar, um, electric drum kit, and countless others. Now, please, please note that when um, if you're using this system, the voice just comes under their own um, little system. Okay, so when you have have a voice, it's going to be either Soprano, mezzo soprano, alto, tenor, baritone, or bass. Okay, so they can be used within each of these systems. So, explain how a sound is made. Another aspect of, of what is tambourine music is the method of sound production by the performer on an individual instrument. Each musical instrument has several ways that a sound can be but can be produced or even altered by the performer. The techniques used will depend on the type of instrument and how a sound is naturally made. An example of a different timbre or tone colour produced on an instrument could be on the violin. On the violin, the performer can make a sound that is bowed, plucked, double, stopped, triple stopped, or even a sound can be made by using the wood of the bow instead. The same melody could be played, each with a different new technique, and each time the timbre of the instrument would be different and would make the melody sound different. When describing the action used to produce a sound, it can generally come under the following musical techniques. Blowing, singing, tapping, hitting, pressing, strumming, picking, plucking, scrapping, scraping, <laughs> humming, sliding, screaming, growling, and flutter tonguing. Describing the timbre. To describe the timbre of an instrument, you will need to use an adjective. The adjectives used to describe the unique sound quality or tone color of an instrument are limitless, and generally you can't go wrong with this because it is really a matter of a personal opinion. In the table uh, um, to the right, okay, you can see there are some um, adjectives that you can use to describe the timbre of an instrument. Feel free to create your own list of words that you can use to describe the tone color of an instrument in the music you like to listen to. Now, there are so certain things with um, when you're describing timbre. Please don't use words like sharp or flat because that's actually referring to the pitch, okay? So you might want to use that it sounds bright or brilliant 
okay, or silvery, or those sorts of things instead of sharp, okay, so be very careful that you don't use words like that when you're describing instruments, okay, but again, there's really no right or wrong here, it's just you've got to be a bit little, little bit logical, because you probably wouldn't describe a, um, say, a dun-dun, which is an African type of bass drum, as, um, as a sweet sound, it probably isn't, it's probably more resonant, maybe, or pure, or strong, or booming, or dark, Okay, but I wouldn't necessarily call it futuristic futuristic or buzzing. Maybe it does have a buzz. But, you know, think about it. Role of an instrument. There are four main roles that an instrument can perform in any given piece of music. Please note that not every piece of music will have an instrument at each of these roles. Try thinking about the roles of an instrument as a meal that you order in a cafe or restaurant. When you order a meal, you order the main ingredient, for example, the steak. The steak is the hero of the meal, the main part, just like the melody is the main part that people remember in the music. The other parts that come with your steak, like some fries or a salad and a yummy sauce, all add to the steak to make it more enjoyable to eat. You could just eat the steak, but it would be boring. So too in music, you could just have the melody, but it would be a bit boring as well. When you add the other ingredients or accompaniments to the meal, it makes for a more interesting experience. Just like a meal, the different musical roles performed by the different instruments in the ensemble add to the melody and also make it more interesting listening experience. Melody. A melody is defined as a series of pitches that form a tune. The melody, or main melody, is the part that is most memorable and is often the part you sing along to in the music. Beat. An instrument that performs a beat is often a drum or percussion instrument. The beat is defined as performing the underlying pulse of the music and helps the listener to hear the tempo of the music. Melodic accompaniment. The melodic accompaniment can be performed by any pitched instrument that is not performing the main melody but plays along and supports the melody. For example, if there was someone singing and a guitar strumming the chords, then the guitar would be the melodic accompaniment and the melody would be, the sung, would be sung by the vocalist. Rhythmic accompaniment. These are any instrument that performs with and supports the beat. These could be like a tambourine or shaker that plays a rhythmic pattern to accompany the drum kit that is playing the beat. The bass guitar or double bass or string bass or are also often part of the rhythm section or rhythmic accompaniment. Even though the bass plays pitched notes, they are often in time and playing on the beat with the drum kit. Register of an instrument. The musical definition of register is the height of the pitch that an instrument performs in. For example, a violin can perform in a higher register than the cello, and the cello can perform a higher register than the double bass. To describe the register of an instrument, there are two main terms that can be used, treble or bass. A simple way to remember this is to think of a piano. Roughly in the middle of the piano is a note called middle C. Anything above or to the right of this note is in the treble register and anything, any note below or to the left is in the bass register. Describing the register of an instrument can go even further by adding the terms upper, mid or lower to treble or bass. For example, a melodic line performed by a piccolo could be described as being played in the upper treble register. Another example could be the bassoon performing a melody or melodic line in the mid to low bass register. Range of an instrument the range of an instrument can be defined as the distance between the lowest and the highest note being performed. It is like the range in a set of numbers or statistics. The range of a melody or melodic line can be described as narrow, medium, an octave, wide, very wide or extensive. A good example of a melody that has a narrow range would be in this children's nursery rhyme, Hot Cross Buns. This simple melody uses only three pitches and therefore has a very narrow range. A song with a medium range would be Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. This melody has a range that does not go beyond the octave. An example of an instrument with the potential for an extensive range is the piano. From its lowest note to its highest, it spans seven octaves. Why is timbre important? The element of music timbre is important for several reasons. Timbre is what gives each instrument their unique sound or voice in the music. If every instrument sounded the same, then our music would not have a lot of variety. The same piece of music played by different instruments can, can and does sound very different in comparison to each other. The timbre of an instrument makes it appealing to a people of all different ages, cultures and tastes. Some people love the crunchy or distorted sounds of an electric guitar, where others prefer the sounds of a clean acoustic guitar. The timbre of an instrument is what makes music appealing to people everywhere. 
music appreciation and timbre. To appreciate music or to enjoy a piece of music, it helps to understand the different timbres and tone colours produced by the performing media or sound sources. By knowing what instruments are performing and how the sounds are being produced, you can begin to really appreciate what the performers are trying to communicate through the sounds that they are making. The timbre of an instrument is what gives the music its own flavour. By using different te techniques on an instrument, the sounds created add a bit of spice to the overall music. Next time you are performing on your instrument, try experimenting with the different types of sounds that you can create. Try colouring the notes with different techniques. They say, especially in jazz music, that you should never perform the melody the same twice. Exploring the different timbres that your instrument can create will help you to make that melody different every time you repeat it. Learn from other musicians and how they add timbre and originality to their sound. Ask yourself, how are they making that sound? What technique or techniques are they using? What instrument are they performing on? What words can I use to describe the sounds that are being made? What role are they performing in the ensemble? How does this role affect or contribute to the overall sound of the music? Then, when you know more, you can add to your own repertoire and become a better musician in the process. Rem remember that the elements of music are like ingredients in a recipe. Sometimes it is a good thing to try something new. You never know, you might like the flavour. If you'd like a free set of the Elements of Music listening question cards to begin your music appreciation journey, use the link you can see here or in the description below. You might even want to check out what resources are ready for you to use or purchase and download in my store today due to your teaching resources. Again, the link will be in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find that um, this is inf information is very helpful for you. You can, again, find music classroom resources ready for you to use today in my Teachers Pay Teachers store. You can simply just Google Julia Teachers te Julia Teaching Resources and you will find the, my store in the Teachers Pay Teachers website. Or you can click the link in the description below. Until next time, happy listening, and I'm Julia from Julia Teaching Resources.